Fire on Fire, A Cloak of Shadows In the run-up to the autumn equinox, the Empire snapped closed a trap around the neck of the Druge forces in Zenith. A force of Imperial soldiers led by the Hounds of Glory conquered the shadow-haunted forests of Lustri, cutting the Orc armies off from the Malum. Seven Druge armies, trapped in Procaris and Accursion, panicked, not used to being trapped, much more experienced at being the one closing the trap, they sought to escape. Their best hope to escape the territory with their miserable lives was a powerful night magic enchantment that would allow their warriors to slip the noose closing around them. During the equinox, the heroes of the Empire poured through the Sentinel Gate to the glade of night enshrouding in Accursion to thwart their desperate magic working. The heroes were victorious, and the battle magicians of the tainted basilisk and their allies among the Gulai of Sarangrave were scattered. But not before they had managed to enchant four of the seven Druge generals brought to bay in Zenith. Half the Druge armies were left unprotected from the wrath of the Empire. Almost immediately, the Druge tried to flee north to Sarangrave. In addition to the strategic mastery that had trapped them in Zenith, the Citadel Guard had woven a gossamer-thin, steel-strong strand of magic around them, shackling their movement and ensuring that even those who made it through the suddenly hostile forests of Lustri would not be able to venture further than the Sarangrave. The furious knights of the eastern sky and the brutal warriors of the Golden Axe held fast in Lustri and made the Druge pay for their desperate action. The woods are lonely, dark and deep, and made doubly dangerous by the magic of imperial magicians. The Druge make great use of the wards and shrouds that turn the land against interlopers. For a change, it was the orcs of the Malum forced to contend with the anger of the forests. The forest itself worked against the Druge, frustrating their attempts to flee, and offering protection to the imperial soldiers fighting among the angry trees. It is difficult to say for certain how many orcs fell beneath those heavy boughs. Even those four armies protected by their coward's shroud, the tainted basilisk themselves, the red lizard, the hidden widow, and deadly blade, felt the sting of imperial blades. Those armies without that arcane protection, the arrow viper, the hidden snake, and the poison blade, paid an incalculable price in blood, with thousands slaughtered trying to flee across the borders into the Malum. The tally is incomplete, but by a rough estimation, perhaps as many as 4,000 orcs died despite their protections. Most of their bodies still lie where they fell, rotting among the roots of the ancient trees of Lustri. A Furious Blade The armies may have fled, but the battle for Zenith was by no means over. Dark magic still infused the marshes of Procaris, Warbands of roving orcs and tormented souls still remained, eager to keep their grip on the lands they had conquered. The Dornish soldiers of the Hounds of Glory lead the charge to purge the Druge from Zenith. Supported by the clear eyes of the Citadel Guard, heedless of the cost, they smash against the Druge remaining in Procaris, breaking through the mystical defences there by force of will as much as by force of arms. The fighting is bitter, but there is little doubt as to who will be the victor. The marshes of Procaris fall in short order, and after them the mountains of Accursion. The last of the shattered spires that still litter the heights of Zenith are freed from the grasp of the Druge at last. A Banner of Flame With the influence of the Highborn Assembly and with the Seventh Wave and Granite Pillar taking the lead, the focus in Zenith lies not in punishing the fleeing Druge armies, although make no mistake, the Dornish and the Varushkans ensure they pay a heavy price for their misdeeds. Rather, the emphasis lies on reducing the damage they do to Zenith as they leave. The Empire has seen the spite of the Druge before, in Holberg and Rakos in particular. What they cannot control they will often destroy. They have wrought a great deal of destruction in Zenith already, and nobody wants to see them wreak any more. The first target are the tormented souls. 
While some have already been laid to rest, many more remain to terrorise those who have survived the Druze occupation. Created during the winter solstice last year, most are forged from the spirits of highborn and Urizen soldiers captured by the Druze. It seems the orcs intend them to remain behind, to seed Zenith with despair or to distract the Imperial armies from pursuing them into Sarangrave. The vigilance of the highborn encourages priests accompanying all the Imperial armies in Zenith to turn their attention to the task of freeing these unliving thralls from their bondage, or letting them pass at last beyond life into the labyrinth. There are several pitched engagements. There are perhaps as many as a hundred tormented souls in Zenith, each one a match for many Imperial soldiers. They need to be rooted out, defeated and exorcised. In the end, while not every tormented soul is dealt with, the vast majority are freed. The ones who remain are forced into hiding in the wastes between the spires, forced to lie low and lick their wounds. They may present individual threats in the future, but that will be a concern for Imperial heroes rather than armies. Then there are the Druge warbands who do not attempt to flee Zenith, but rather dig in like ticks. The orcs of the Malum love to leave guerrillas and assassins behind, waiting in the wild places for the Empire to drop its guard so they can emerge without warning to raid and kill. Most recently, the Empire has seen the threat of these left-behind warriors in Ossium, where their presence ensures that even with the armies driven away, the defenders cannot rest easy. Vigilance triumphs over the malice of the Druge. The scouts of the Granite Pillar are particularly adept at locating the guerrilla camps the orcs attempt to establish in the far reaches of Lustri, in the caves beneath the Kirshen, and in the ruins of Procheris. Methodically they work, locating these lingering druge, surrounding their camps and putting an end to them. There are still scattered bands of druge in Zenith. Even the most vigilant cannot hope to trap all of them, but they are too busy looking to their own survival to think about presenting a large-scale threat. Finally, there are the Miasma Pillars, several of which still remain in the Eastern Territory. Until they are dealt with, Zenith will still labour under the stifling atmosphere of despair and terror that the Druge eventually weave over every land they conquer. Scouts from the Seventh Wave in particular are hard at work locating the pillars that anchor the Miasma. They will also likely be places where remaining Druge will gather, seeking to take advantage of the aura that surrounds them. At least this will make them easier to find, as one highborn unconquered says with grim humour. A ruined land. Between the fleeing Druze armies and the forces remaining behind to slow the liberation of Zenith, some Imperial soldiers fell and will not rise again. Zenith is freed, but in some ways the battle is only half over. The territory has been devastated by the Druze. Even as they invaded, they burned and broke anything they could not use. During the occupation, they ripped every shred of profit from the land that they could, forcing the conquered Urizen to work themselves to death to provide them with magical materials, crystal manor, and more. Over the last year, as the Empire has fought to drive them out, the tainted basilisk have desperately looted every magical resource they could get their hands on. Much of the population still lives, albeit in exile, thanks to the actions of Imperial heroes. Some will be eager to take back their homes, but they will return to a land of shattered spires. Many have begun to establish new lives for themselves in Morrow, in Redoubt, and even in Highgard. Some may have little interest in coming back to see what the orcs have made of their once beautiful halls. Others may need reassurance that the Druze will not return as quickly as they fled. Procheris in particular is now a stinking swamp still poisoned with Druge malice, home to swarms of savage, venomous bog octopuses from the Sarangrave. The great farms that once fed spires across Urizen are no more, and rebuilding them would represent a colossal undertaking. Rebuilding Zenith will be no small task. The Synod and the Senate alike are exploring how best to restore imperial rule of Zenith, the Urizen will no doubt have their own ideas how the scars of Druge occupation might be alleviated. Yet while magic is potent, 
there are limits to what it can achieve. The marshes of Procaris are not going to go away any time soon. The memory of the Druge occupation will linger for generations, and the fear that they might return one night when the defenders of Zenith have become complacent. For now, though, Zenith is secure. Game Information Zenith The three unprotected Druge armies have suffered significant casualties, and even those armies with a cloak of shadows have not made it through Lustri unscathed. By contrast, the Empire has suffered only around 300 casualties, primarily suffered during the attack on the Night Fortress at Procaris. The other impact of the Highborn Mandate is that the Druge have been unable to apply the terrorised quality to the territory. Likewise, none of the regions of Zenith will have the under threat quality. The borders are as secure as those of any other Imperial territory. Most of the tormented souls and many of the Druge warbands that stayed behind in Zenith have been destroyed. While individuals or small groups may remain, they do so to provide antagonists for future skirmishes or player events. They don't represent any kind of major threat to the people of Zenith. There are still miasma pillars in Zenith, anchoring the Druge miasma, which will need to be dealt with at some point, before the territory is completely secure. However, unlike the influence of the Black Plateau, the Empire knows how to deal with this threat. Ceremonies of consecration or day magic rituals can deal with them, and the locations of several key pillars are already known. The region of Procaris is still infused with night magic that will enhance dripping echoes of the Fen, targeting that region regardless of who casts it. While it has offered additional protection to the Druge, that magic will also support Imperial Covens who use the night magic citadel there. Dealing with the legacy of the Druge, discussing spoils of war, and restoring Zenith as a territory will all be addressed in more detail in the Winds of Fortune.